the bathroom, right? In the bathroom? Yeah, and you have to kind of squat down, you know, because oh. Japanese toilets are, you know, made for squatting all the way down. So they had to carry their samurai sword always. Always, even yes, in the toilet? even when they're in the toilet, right? Now, if you're in a toilet, now, the Japanese toilets are very small, right? So you don't have enough space to actually draw the sword and defend mm. yourself. So they have special set of skills where they are able to defend themselves, right, from small positions. <gasps> using the butt of or the hilt of the sword to actually defend themselves. It's, it's quite like incredible. part of their body. Yeah. Oh, it's quite God. amazing what they came through. And this is really about survival skills, mm. right? So how about this sasumata? Well, the sasumata is um, <laughs> the man catcher, as we know it as. This is actually something that they use similar in the, uh, today's police forces in America and all okay. over the world. And what they do is they keep their distance from their opponent. Okay, so if I'm the opponent... So let's just say you're really scary, even if you had some kind of weapon, yeah. like if you had like a okay. sword or something like that, right? Yeah. And then, you know, so I don't want to start fighting with you, so I can try and unhandle the sword try and maybe tilt you over or try and catch you in the throat and then get you on the ground oh and that's why it's called a man catcher and from distance yeah because if that. you like have that sword right and we were in close it would be kind of scary because you could cut mm. me but because i have enough distance right. right i could you know manhandle you from over here kind of thing mm. and then even if you kick or slash you wouldn't get oh, as wow. close that's interesting yeah so you know recently there's been a growing interest in japan for classical martial arts from overseas well Don't growing is hard to say i think there's always been an interest for martial arts in japan especially the old school styles you know mm. especially because they have that you know mystic aura of you know survival and you know right. on the battlefield and everything so what holds your interest in modern and classical martial arts well for me the fascination obviously is that with the classical martial arts that you have the chance to learn skills that truly are you know depending on your life mm -hmm. you know and that's uh, not something you can get very often in Japan or in the world today. in the world today. Yeah. right so let's take a look at the trend in people from overseas with an interest in classical martial arts Last year, a new seminar was held for the first time in Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. It invited karateka from 10 countries and territories to learn more about Okinawan karate and classical Okinawan martial arts. Hey! Okinawan karate stresses the beauty and accuracy of forms passed down through generations. The seminar also included classical martial arts that use weapons. This was to help participants understand the diversity of Okinawa's martial arts tradition. The majority of the foreign karateka were experiencing weapons training for the first time and seemed keen to absorb as much as possible. I'm lucky that I can take part in an unusual seminar like this with so many top instructors. Overseas, classical martial arts may sometimes not be passed on properly. I hope the participants can feel the difference here. There's a growing movement in Japan towards welcoming foreign students interested in the country's martial arts. At the Bujinkan Dojo in Chiba Prefecture, 80% of the students are from outside Japan. That's why I finally came here to find out what it's really about. I think I was reading all the ninja magazines, all the ninja movies, and I wanted to be a ninja. And I was, I was very young, so... Bujinkan's student body is huge, with dojos in 50 countries around the world. Once now it teaches is the 8th century old Togakure Ryu, which contains 18 different types of combat, unarmed and armed. They include Kenpo, sword fighting, Kusarigama, a sickle with a weighted chain, and Bo Shuriken, iron throwing darts. <laughs> Learning these different modes of combat takes a minimum of one year's rigorous training. But for these students, the attraction is much more profound than just becoming a skilled fighter. So it's not about winning a competition, mm -hmm. going to somewhere else and hitting his head mm -hmm. and hitting a cup. It's more about knowing who you are and what you do and what you're here for. You know? mm -hmm. And our martial art teaches about life, about enjoying every moment. There you
you have it, the Bujinkan in Chiba. Mm. It's a world famous dojo for ninjutsu. Oh, really? Yes, the sensei there is very, very famous. He's written uh, many books on ninjutsu. And it's uh, just, you know, spread a wide interest for that whole aspect of what ninjutsu is all about mm. all over the world. So people travel there. They have tour buses that actually go there. Like, really? Like short uh, tours, you know, two days, or three days, or one week, or something like that. So and you why do you also... think people come all the way to Japan Well, because to I think that, that ninjutsu is like probably one of the most unique styles of martial arts, uh, you yeah. know, in the whole world. You know, it's got that whole assassin aura thing going on, you know. Uh, and I think it's uh, it's probably the, the ultimate survival skills. Right, but they can study in their home country, can't they? No, it's different. It's absolutely different. You got to go to the source. It's the same with me. When I was in Denmark training, you know, I needed to go to the source because I wanted to learn from the true masters. Mm. And that's what they have an opportunity to do in, in Chiba. Now, the funny thing about that dojo is that there's so many non-Japanese that are there. There's hardly any Japanese I realize that. Yeah. But uh, that's just the way it is, you know, and people are so interested in it, so. Mm. And they're kind of lucky, because I think it's only one of the only dojos in Japan that I will actually teach to non-Japanese. Oh, really? And because it's a, it's a secluded, you know, uh, thing, you know, even the, the kobujutsu that I learned on, on Samurai Spirit shows was also very uh, hard for me to actually get accepted into the dojos at all. How long is, like, the lesson? Do you know? I really wouldn't know. Mm. Because I've never done it properly and I've never seen a full class or a full right. session, you know. But I know that the people that go to these places are super serious about mm. it. Oh, I yeah. bet. Okay, so next we see how Nicholas got to grips with some classical techniques for the first time. Shizuoka Prefecture is well known for Mount Fuji. It's also the home of Suyoryu Iai Kempo, a sword fighting school founded more than 400 years ago. The school's 15th head, Yoshimitsu Katsuse, has agreed to give Nicholas some instruction. In demonstrations, Suyoryu Iai Kempo generally uses a real sword. The reason is simple. Imitation swords don't give the feel of real battle. In addition to swordsmanship, the school also teaches the kusarigama, a sickle with a weighted chain, the naginata, a long-bladed pole, the jo, a type of staff, and the kobusoku, a short sword. As a martial artist himself, Nicholas is fascinated to see the techniques up close. All the techniques that I saw today, everything was just so focused and so intense and everyone was like the energy was just incredible maybe if it's not too much of a uh, inconvenience you could teach me a couple of techniques i would like to learn something i understand first up for nicholas is the kusarigama the kusarigama is a sickle linked to an iron weight with a chain the chain is used to immobilize the opponent's weapon before striking them with the sickle. The master begins by showing Nicholas the weapon. <laughs> oh my god, that is scary. Here comes in a longer one and that iron thing on the end of it is even longer. Oh my, oh! Oh, no, 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 no way, man. Imagine that, on top of your head, and I got hit a couple of times on the head here. I would have smashed my face in. I would have been broken to pieces and bones. The real kusarigama is too dangerous for a novice, so Nicholas will use a practice weapon. First of all, let me show you how the chain wraps around your neck. Nicholas freezes in anticipation of what's coming. Hi. Hi. Okay. The chain almost seems to come alive as it spirals around Nicholas's neck. <laughs> I feel like a caged animal here. Get me out of this thing. Oh my god. Uh, that was the scariest thing I've done in years. Obviously, this is this is for practicing, so it's it's not really that hard. It's kind of hard, but still. It may look like simply swinging a chain, but when Nicholas tries it, he hits his shin. The kusarigama shouldn't be taken lightly and takes a great deal of skill and practice to wield effectively. <laughs> Nicholas has trouble even mastering the basics. 
Next up, he tries Iai Jutsu, some of the sword skills. The key to Iai Jutsu is to instantaneously draw the sword and make a cut from any position. Drawing the sword quickly is essential. Well, that's because I'm using a real sword. It's the real. The master tells Nicholas to attack him anytime. As soon as Nicholas tries to draw his sword, he's beaten to it. The master is so quick that Nicholas has no time to ready his weapon. Nicholas has had a very short course in classical Japanese martial arts. At the end of the session, he asks the master about their essence. The biggest difference between classical martial arts and other sports is that there are no rules. You can't choose only a single weapon and must be able to use whatever's at hand. What will you do if you don't have a sword? If you only have a stone, you have to use it. That's right. That's the aim of martial arts. Staying alive. Ooh, what an experience for you. <laughs> yeah, it was actually, it was as scary as it, as it looked. I, mean, I wasn't even acting on that show. It was no. crazy, yeah. But you're an expert. Yeah, and but you look that strong, is but in so front of the different. It's a totally different world. You was know, because I was brought up in a, in a, in a modern right. martial arts, right? And we have a set of rules, you know, we have, you know, mm -hmm. we train to fight in tournaments, you know, and get a trophy and everything. But this yes. is just oh, like what? real life and death. <laughs> You know, it's like the guy came at me with that stick, for example, and it's like that could have been a knife. Mm. This one here, the Kusarigama, yeah, is just unbelievable. I had no control over it whatsoever. <laughs> but these masters, especially the, the top head of the dojo here, was just like so skilled at it. You know, he, he killed me, I don't know, maybe 50 times on that. Really? Day. You couldn't I, do I anything? I kept trying. No. He's like, come again, come again. And every time I tried to do something, I tried to run in, I tried to walk in, I tried to do everything. Every time, boom. <laughs> you know? So even this one here is also a replica, right? Right. But that thing at the end of it, right, it's, it's supposed to be a metal one, right? And if that hits you on the head, it will crack your skull. It would. I don't blame you. You know, I was like, I swear, it was like I was so out of my element, it wasn't even funny. It was like... I, I didn't have any words for it. So you know? what was it like standing in front of that master? Because, I mean, you're way taller and bigger than him. Much bigger, much physically stronger. Right, you and know, younger. And it, didn't, it didn't matter. Once you have a weapon, right, it was just, you know, he could have killed me easily. Mm. And it's like, you know, it's like, you know, come on. He was laughing all the way up until he says, come on, give me your best shot. And I was like, at that moment, his eyes just switched from, like, from normal person, a nice person, the teacher, into like killer. Oh. And it was like, uh oh. <laughs> I don't think I want to walk into that. Oh, <laughs> you know? So he stayed so focused and intense, oh, right? The focus and intensity that he had compared to, like, you know, that anything I've ever really experienced up until that point was just so intense. It's like, you know, um, I, I wish I could get that, <laughs> you know. But if you train, could you maybe? Well, I think I think I have the same thing, you know, in a tournament, for example, when I switch it on. But that's because I'm in a confident situation, you know. Mm -hmm. No one's going to get killed. No one's right. going to die, you know. We're not going to go out there and do anything scary, you know. It's mm -hmm. this very, in, you know, controlled environment. But this is not a controlled environment. And they literally will use anything mm -hmm. as a weapon. Like if we're sitting here, he might tell you, well, maybe I could use this chair to kill you. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I've learned it's a